I joke all the time that I think the Philadelphia food scene per capita is way better than New York City. Weird thing with Michael, he's almost like Rain Man. He, he steps into a restaurant and he just, he sees what other people can't see. He kind of sees beyond the physical things and that's where his imagination kind of goes. Put this here, or this works there. Probably makes sense for it to be the dining room. I hear or you. Or a portion of the dining room and then it's like a huge bar upstairs. I have far more fun building out a space and getting it open and running it for a couple months than sort of figuring out how to keep it going forever. When Mike opened this restaurant about 14 years ago, there was no brunch restaurant in the area. It was empty factories and warehouses and as it's grown, Cafe Lift has grown. I love the idea of finding an abandoned oil changing garage and turning it into a restaurant just because that's fun. We toured the Jiffy Loop space and there's something unique about that space. It sort of has energy, it's in a perfect location. This particular space just spoke to me instantly. It's really kind of awesome to work with somebody that has a vision and has a drive. His ability to kind of see something in nothing. Seating out front a little bit, beer garden in the back. We're gonna add some shipping containers to the back of the building. You can carve them up real nice so like the wall can accordion up and down. The aesthetics of the restaurant almost have to match the food so it all comes together. We put some nice signage, take the bars off the window, make them all operable. We may potentially have to get this approved by every owner in the building, and we know where we stand right now. 46 units, 20 people against. Jason is pretty much a genius in regards to locating really cool real estate. So we have to figure out our strategy to yeah. get through this issue. There's a couple of people who just stuck their heads up, and they're going to be a struggle. I think I know who some of the major players are. I think. The best thing to do is just sit down in a room and have a discussion. Absolutely not. I've lived here for 29 years. I already live above their restaurant. There's a lot of noise, confusion, and traffic. Uh, I'm going to fight them tooth and nail. You know, I have enough problems with this rail park outside of my window. I've lived in this neighborhood since 1979, and this is phase one of Philadelphia's rail park, which will open later this year. I would call her a bit of a visionary, and then continuing on through to see it through. The biggest thing this park will do once the whole three miles are realized is that it's gonna connect 10 different neighborhoods. I've always seen it as really important to have like green space and public space outside of the existing neighborhood to draw another reason for people to come there. Actually, Cafe Lift came about right at the same time that the idea for this came about. So Cafe Lift, you could say, has been a partner in this project all along. We opened this place here, Prohibition Tap Room. It's been going for 10 years. And I had always been like kind of passionate about these nano breweries, which are just 30 barrel batches or less. Sterling Pig is a brew pub slash brewery that really hones in on that model. Tim, Amy, and I went over to Sterling Pig today in hopes to discuss them having a proprietary beer at Prohibition Tap Room that is unique just to the space. Who doesn't want a nice cold beer or a wonderful glass of wine with pizza? And we have Bufada, a wood-fired pizza place just north of here. Bufada is a sort of slang, which essentially means the binge. We put our own little twist on some of the toppings, but we stay pretty true to form. You know, we're limited on the availability. Like, we, on the weekends, we get so, so busy. You know, we're turning people away. Just east of here, there's been a resurgence of a lot of something similar happening. This neighborhood is pretty awesome because it's all these post-industrial, you know, buildings that have been converted into, like, true live-work style loft spaces. And as things keep happening in Fishtown, I wanted to make sure that this place just felt like what was here. We put a butcher shop in the front of the restaurant and said, here's something that is no longer present that a community like this might have had. I love meat and this place does meat really well. We took this old AAA welding building and we kept some of the vibes here, like still a cinder block wall with hand painted letters on it and still all pulleys and steel hanging from the ceiling. It's very important for, for Michael to source from everything, that local farms, local breweries, local bread, everything comes from within a fairly close radius. It's built on a handshake with us, the farmers, and then our customers. 
his roots are here. He's trying to expand this area and moving forward with other locations that we you know, plan to open. So that's a big part of the neighborhood development is revitalizing. So Neil, Michael, Jill, and Risa are uh, Pelago. It's a Filipino food movement that they've been using the pop-up medium as a way of exposing people to, to the Filipino food culture, uh, which is really underexposed at this point. This, different than what we showed you at Jiffy Lube, is a destination restaurant. We'll take this location that maybe wouldn't be a good fit for sort of a corner bar and try to draw people to the neighborhood, you know, by having cool space with a great concept. I think my goal is to run multiple locations and to see to it that they all feel like Cafe Lifted on day one. It's so passe to say, but, but Philadelphia is definitely way more than just a cheesesteak.